Hi everybody, in this video we will learn how to set up a camera pan with a motion blur effect with the tools available on Clips to your paint. Let's begin. To be able to focus on the camera tools and the way we will create this motion blur, I have prepared in advance these animation folders. One, this animation with a girl throwing this paper airplane, animation of the airplane flying, and finally this girl being hit by it, and of course the background. The way this is set up, I make sure that the position of the girl's hand, the flying plane, and the landing plane all match. All of them have the same height. And two, the animation of the plane is pretty much stationary. It stays around the middle of the frame. This is because the camera will be following the plane from the moment it lifts the hand until it lands. So from our point of view, the pepper airplane is close to being static, giving it has the same speed as the camera at all times. But this means that the background of the scene will be moving, creating a directional blur effect. So the first thing we will imagine is that we need to blur the background and set the camera to move across it. But that leaves out the fact that as soon as the plane starts flying, the girl will become part of the background. She's static. So she will have to be affected by this motion blur as well. So to set this up, we will need to take the last animation frame from the video girl to blur it out, just as the plane takes off, and take the first frame of the other girl to do the same. Given the fact that these animations have line work, shadows, and colors in different layers, the easiest way to do this is to just move to the point of the timeline we need, copy the entire animation folder, and then you rasterize it. This gives us a flat, transparent image. Once we have these layers, we merge them with the background layer in the respective positions, the video girl to the right and the other girl to the other end. Now, if we didn't want any blur effects, um, we could very well just take this giant background, put it in a camera folder and move it. But because we need to apply a blur effect, a thing we can do is to scale down the entire background into the canvas area and this way we can apply a directional blur effect. This will make us lose some resolution when scaling it back up but I just didn't mind given the fact that this background would be moving very fast, so it won't be very noticeable. However, if you don't want to do this, you can just take this entire image into a new document, you apply the blur effect and you bring it back here. After scaling this layer back up, we just need to set up our camera folders. So we go to animation, new animation layer, to the camera folder to create a new camera. This will be the camera containing the new background we created but not the paper plane that won't move or have any blur effect applied to it. Now we take the first part of the animation with the original background and put it in a folder. And we will shrink this folder to only be visible for the duration of this part of the animation in the timeline. Now we take our camera, insert a keyframe at this point of the timeline, taking it over from here, and then moving the camera to the other side until it matches the position of the impact animation. And in a new folder, we insert the second part of the animation with the original background and truncate this folder to appear only from this position until the animation ends. Now we press play to see how it looks. However, there's an extra thing that we can do. This animation is a bit sudden. The blur effect shouldn't pop that fast into the scene. It should ease in and ease out from one side to the other. One very inefficient way of doing this is creating an animation folder that covers the flying time of the timeline and replacing every single frame with a snapshot of the background at every position. And then we just blur out every single frame by hand, easing in and easing out, adjusting it manually. But this will take way too long and it wouldn't be practical. So another way would be to just take a copy of the unblur background and just blur it to a lesser degree. We take this one, put it under the other background, and we just start to delete the more pronounced blur effect that we have created before. That will create a gradient of blur effects, if that even exists. But that's a way to explain it. It will just ease in into a less strong blur effect into a more pronounced one. Now we just need to scale it back up positioning in our camera folder and press play and that looks a lot better. This technique can be used for zooming in, going into diagonals or transitioning from one completely different scene to another one. It is pretty useful and it's right here without having to do 
extra compositing. Um, that's about it. If you're interested, you can check my animations on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.